the book of Amos chapter 7 with a word of wisdom from our Father in Jesus' name, verse 1. Thus hath the Lord God shown unto me, and behold, he formed grasshoppers, that's locusts, in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth, and lo, it was the latter growth after the king's mowings. From the beginning of the term of the locust to the end, you could even say, that five-month-long hour of temptation. And within that five months, you have the gnar, swarmer, devourer stage, then the deadly wound, then Satan appears, the king of the locusts, as you know from Revelation chapter 9, verse 11, giving his name in both the Hebrew and the Greek, Abaddon and Apollyon meaning destroyer. Satan is the destroyer of souls. If someone isn't smart enough to know the difference between the false Christ and the true Christ, and the difference between the actual holy angels, the actual armies of heaven that come with Christ at the seventh trumpet, and this locust army that comes with Satan when he's cast out of heaven at the beginning of the five months. And it came to pass that when they had made an end of eating the grass of the land, then I said, O Lord God, forgive, I beseech thee, by whom shall Jacob arise, for he is small. In other words, whatever the king of the locusts, the king of Babylon, Satan, whoever he doesn't kill spiritually, his locust army are going to, unless they have the seal of God in their forehead. They can't hurt those that have the seal of God in their forehead because they know that it's the locust army and they know that the king they have over them is Satan, the false Christ, not the true Christ. The Lord repented for this, it shall not be, saith the Lord. In other words, they won't completely destroy everybody spiritually. There will be that election, that remnant, that will overcome and go into the millennium with eternal souls. The first resurrection. Thus hath the Lord God shown unto me, and behold, the Lord God called to contend by fire. Our God is a consuming fire. But for every positive, there's a negative. You also have the fire, smoke, and brimstone, which comes out of the mouths of that locust army in the fourth and final stage. And you can read of this in Revelation chapter 9. By these three are the third part of men killed by the fire, the smoke, and the brimstone, which issues out of the mouths of Satan's army, the locusts. It's an army of deception. They don't physically kill people, and this is how we know that the locust army are exclusively the fallen angels, because what army doesn't kill people? All the types that we've seen of the locust army, and yes, the types play into the actuality and lead up to that five-month period, but the de facto locust army are exclusively the fallen angels. They're only here for five months, and they don't kill people physically, but only spiritually, by deceiving them into worshiping the false Christ. So, behold, the Lord God called to contend by fire, and it devoured the great deep, and did eat up a part, a third, as we know from Revelation chapter 9. Notice that word devour, the devourer stage of the locust army, okay? Then said I, O Lord God, cease, I beseech thee, by whom shall Jacob arise, for he is small. The Lord repented for this. This also shall not be, saith the Lord God. In other words, some will not die spiritually at that time, they will not bend a knee to Baal, and speaking of the election, of course. Thus he showed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, A plumb line. Then said the Lord, Behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. I will not again forgive them any more. And how do you get out from under this? Jesus Christ. That's how you obtain forgiveness from the Father for your sins, is believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ and confessing your sins, and upon repentance they're erased. And it is a narrow path. Narrow is the way, as Christ said in Matthew chapter 7. So you can see that within this plumb line, God's Word lets you know the parameters you are to stay within if you want to get into the millennium with an eternal soul. 
an immortal soul, that is to say, if you want to take part in the first resurrection. Otherwise, you're going to be deceived if you don't know where the line is between truth and deception. The Euphrates, that is to say, which is the border between truth and Babel. That dries up at the sixth trumpet, but not in the minds of God's elect. They know what shall come to pass in this in generation because they're familiar with their father's word and the high places of Isaac shall be desolate again looking forward to the five month long hour of temptation the desolator appearing in Jerusalem in the midst of the week the desolator who comes on the wings of abomination also known as the abomination of desolation Satan as Antichrist and what did Christ say you are to do when you see that let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. And the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam, that's the ten tribes to the north, with the sword, the sword being the word of the Lord. And there's a historical type that happened, yes, and it looks forward to our time. As we know from the epistles of Paul, these things happen to them as an example to us living in this final generation. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, house of God. This is not a Levitical priest. First Kings chapter 12 documents that when Jeroboam set up the two golden calves, he also set up a bunch of priests that weren't from Levi. So these are fake priests and it's more than likely that they're Kenites, okay? You know that the Kenites infiltrated the priesthood from Ezra and Nehemiah and in Christ's time known as the Pharisees. And it's undebatable when you read Matthew chapter 23 that the Kenites, the sons of Cain, had infiltrated the priesthood and they even caused Christ's crucifixion. They always carry out the negative part of God's plan. So Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, the false priest, sent to Jeroboam king of Israel, saying, Amos hath conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos saith, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. And so it was by the Assyrian. But is Amaziah lying here? Is that exactly what Amos said? Well, you can read for yourself and determine that on your own. This is more than likely a Kenite posing as a priest of God, and it wouldn't be the first or last time that that happened. Remember Ezra and Nehemiah, how they infiltrated the priesthood, the Nethanim, the Kenites. Also, Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go Flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread and prophesy there. Amos was from Judah, as Christ was. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, and it is the king's court. Then answered Amos, and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. That's wild figs, okay? And that five-month-long hour of temptation happens at the end of the final generation, the generation of the fig tree. You are to learn the parable of the fig tree if you want to understand the end times. Christ told you to. He commanded you to learn it. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said unto me, Go prophesy unto my people Israel. So God told him to do this. He didn't do it of his own free will or anything like that and God's elect are used to carry out the will of God now therefore hear thou the word of the Lord thou sayest prophesy not against Israel and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac therefore thus saith the Lord thy wife shall be an harlot in the city remember the whore of Babylon that the virgin bride turns into at the sixth trumpet that great city Babylon which means confusion Satan appearing in Jerusalem to reign as the king of Babylon for that two and a half months, that second half hour, okay? And thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword. They're going to die spiritually. The sword that comes out of Satan's mouth isn't the word of the Lord. It's a twisted, corrupted version of it. 
he takes God's word and twists it, making it into a lie. So it's not really even a version of it. It's the opposite. It doesn't bring about eternal life, but the opposite, spiritual death. And thy land shall be divided by line, and thou shalt die in a polluted land, and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his land. And so it was historically, and so it is now, and so it shall be during that five-month period when the world goes into the captivity of Satan's one-world system. All but those with the seal of God in their forehead, they're already in captivity to Almighty God. So there you have it, the book of Amos chapter 7.